Windows 11 24H2 is available now. So it's time to take another look at Rufus to see if it's still possible to install the most recent version of Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Just to recap, when Windows 11 was first released in 2021, it had stricter hardware requirements than Windows 10, most notably a minimum of 8th gen Intel CPU or AMD Ryzen 2000 and the TPM chip were required. So that ruled out a lot of PCs and laptops that were able to run Windows 10 comfortably, but deemed not good enough to run Windows 11. That's where Rufus comes in. Rufus is a free utility that allows you to take an ISO disk image and convert it into a bootable USB drive so that you can then install an OS onto a PC or laptop. It's often used to create USB media for installing various Linux distros, for example, but it can also be used to create Windows installation media. And when it comes to Windows 11, Rufus has a few extra features. The main one being that it can modify a Windows 11 ISO disk image to enable it to then install on PCs that don't meet the strict hardware requirements of Windows 11. I'll run the PC Health Check tool on this 7th gen Intel laptop. And we can see that it fails the Windows 11 requirements due to not having a TPM chip and the CPU isn't supported. But Rufus isn't just about bypassing Microsoft's hardware checks. There's a couple of other good reasons why you might want to use Rufus, even if your hardware does meet the minimum hardware requirements. And I'll tell you what those are a little later in the video. Before I do that, let's take a look at how to get started with creating Windows 11 installation media and modifying it with Rufus. First of all, you will need the Windows 11 24H2 ISO disk image. And you can download that directly from Microsoft. Just Google download Windows 11. Scroll down to the Windows 11 disk image ISO and follow the prompts to download the ISO file. Next, you'll need the Rufus utility. Head over to rufus.ie and scroll down to the download section. Rufus does get updated from time to time, but you'll always see the latest version here. If you're using Rufus to install Windows 11, then you'll want to choose the 64-bit version and you'll notice there's a standard and a portable version. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, as neither of them require installation. They're both a single executable that you can just run standalone without installing first. Once the application is running, you'll need to insert a USB flash drive which has a capacity of at least 8 gigabytes. And just be aware that this process will completely wipe the flash drive, so make sure to back up any data from that drive that you want to keep. Next, I'll click on Select and choose the 24H2 ISO file that I downloaded earlier. You can leave most of the other options on the default settings, although you do need to ensure that you choose the correct partition scheme for your system. You will either be using a legacy BIOS or the more modern UEFI BIOS. If you're not sure which BIOS type you're currently using, you can run a built-in Windows app called MSN432. And check the line that says BIOS mode. It will show either UEFI or legacy depending on what you have in your system. For a UEFI BIOS, you should select the GPT partition scheme. And for a legacy BIOS, you should choose the NBR partition. Other than that, once you've inserted a flash drive and selected the ISO file, then you can go ahead and click on start. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where you tell Rufus how to configure your installation media, and you've got six options to choose from. You can remove the check for the amount of RAM installed, the check for secure boot, and the check for a TPM chip. You can also remove the requirement for using a Microsoft account for signing into Windows, and this allows you to then sign into Windows with a local account. And that's one of the reasons I mentioned earlier why you might want to use Rufus even if your hardware does meet the minimum requirements. The official Windows 11 installer forces you to use an online Microsoft account like Hotmail or Outlook instead of a traditional local account. Some users still prefer to use a local account but officially this option is no longer possible. Previously it was easy to circumvent this requirement during the Windows install with various workarounds. But as Windows 11 matures, Microsoft are increasingly making it more difficult to sign in with a local account. Checking this option will allow you to use a local account, which brings us nicely onto the next option, which is to automatically create a local account with a username of your choosing. And this gets created during the first boot after installation, or the out-of-box experience as it's officially known. Initially, it will default to the same username you are currently signed in with, but you can modify this and enter a different username if you prefer. This option and the remaining three options are the second reason why you might want to use Rufus regardless of whether the PC meets the minimum specs or not. 
You can specify what regional options to use, as well as skipping all of the privacy questions during the first boot. This means that after the first boot, the rest of the installation will be completely automated and you won't be prompted to answer any questions. Believe it or not, a normal installation of Windows 11 has to go through an incredible 23 screens of prompts before you finally get to the desktop. And the last option is to disable BitLocker encryption. BitLocker is Microsoft's encryption system which encrypts the local disk and prevents unauthorised user access to files on that disk. Normally when certain conditions are met, Windows will automatically encrypt the local disk, but checking this option will ensure that the disk remains unencrypted. Once you've selected all your options, click OK. You'll get a warning telling you that any data on the flash drive will be destroyed. Go ahead and click on OK. Rufus will then format the flash drive and copy the Windows 11 installation media to it along with your modifications. This takes a while so kick back and relax and wait for this to complete. Once complete you're ready to install Windows 11. And there's two methods for installing Windows 11. The first one is a clean install and this will completely wipe your local disk and install a fresh copy of Windows. The second method is an in-place upgrade where you install a newer version of Windows over the top of an existing copy of Windows but all your applications, settings and data are kept intact. Now that I've created my installation media with Rufus, I'll make sure the USB drive is plugged in, then I'll restart the machine. Usually when you want to boot from your USB disk, you need to press a certain key combination in order to select the drive to boot from, or you might need to go into your BIOS and change the boot order. The key to press varies between manufacturers, but I'll leave the most common ones below. I'm on an old Dell laptop and need to press F12 to get to the boot menu. Then I'll choose the USB disk and it will then boot into the Windows 11 installer. From here on in it acts like the official Windows installer so I'll make sure I've got the correct language settings and click next. And next again at the keyboard settings. As this is going to be a clean install I need to tick this box to confirm that I agree that everything on the disk will be deleted. Then click next. I need to click accept to agree to the license terms and then I need to tell the installer where to install Windows to. Unless you're installing Windows onto a brand new disk then you're likely to have existing partitions on the disk which need to be deleted first and there's two ways to do this. In my example here all the partitions named disk 0 are the partitions on the SSD in this laptop and disk 1 is my USB installation media. So I need to delete all the partitions on disk 0 before installing Windows 11. You can either click on each partition in turn and click delete partition. Or you can completely wipe the disk in one go. To do that, press shift and F10 to open a command prompt. Then type disk part to go into Microsoft's disk partitioning tool. You can type list disk to see all the disks that are currently attached. And here I can see my disk 0 which is the SSD storage in my laptop and disk 1 is the USB installation media. First I'll select disk 0 by typing select disk 0. Then I'll type clean. Now disk 0 is completely blank and I'm ready to take a new installation of Windows 11. I'll close this command prompt and click on refresh. And now we can see that all the partitions on disk 0 are gone. I'll make sure disk 0 is selected and click next. It then gives me a summary of what's going to happen. I'll go ahead and click install and the installation will begin. The installation will then complete and boot into the out of box experience. This is where normally you would need to click through 23 screens of questions to answer before getting to the desktop. But the only thing you'll be prompted for is to connect to your Wi-Fi network. After that, the rest of this out-of-box setup will be fully automated, assuming you chose those options when creating the install media with Rufus. It will automatically sign in with the user account previously specified, and the installation of Windows 11 is then complete. So that's a clean install completed, let's now take a look at an in-place upgrade where you install the latest version of Windows 11 over the top of an earlier version of Windows, but it retains your existing settings, files and applications. I've reinstalled Windows 10 onto this laptop and I've inserted the Rufus USB media that I created earlier. Now with an in-place upgrade there is an extra step you need to do before upgrading. As of Windows 11 24H2, when you're doing an in-place upgrade you do need to apply some additional registry bypasses before you run the Windows 11 setup application. I'll leave the registry entries in the comments section below this video. 
open up a command prompt and run as administrator. Then copy and paste the registry commands into the command prompt window and press enter. You should see a message to say the operation completed successfully. We're now ready to start the upgrade by browsing to your Rufus USB media and running the setup application. Click next to start the upgrade. And click accept to accept the license terms. Setup will then check for updates. You may see this warning advising you that this PC doesn't meet the minimum system requirements. It also says your PC won't be entitled to receive updates. Don't be concerned about this message as Microsoft doesn't block updates on unsupported hardware. You'll still receive the same updates that a fully supported PC would receive. Go ahead and click on accept. You'll then get a summary of what's going to happen. Click on install and the upgrade will start. You'll get a familiar blue screen showing you the upgrade progress and the rest of the upgrade is fully automated. A couple of reboots later and you'll be at your original desktop. The in-place upgrade is now complete and I can see my existing applications and data is still there. Finally, I recommend running the disk cleanup tool. This will allow you to delete the previous version of Windows, which is kept in case you want to roll back. If you're happy with Windows 24 H2, then you may as well remove the old version and recover the disk space back. To do that, click on the start button and type disk cleanup. Open the app and then click on clean up system files. Then scroll down and select previous version of Windows. Tick the box and click OK, then click on delete files. And you'll regain all the disk space back. So just to wrap up, as of Windows 11 24H2, it is still possible to use Rufus to do a clean install of Windows 11. And for anyone who wants to do an in-place upgrade, you just need to do a few simple registry tweaks. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.